Hello everybody, we're back again and in this video I'm going to show you how we can change the shape from a uh, simple cube to uh, any shape you can imagine uh, uh, to cut our, our shape mod with. And I want to introduce you to a concept of uh, data and how it's saved in Blender uh, so you can swap uh, objects out very quickly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my cursor here and I'm going to create uh, a, a cube object here and I'm also going to create a uh, sphere object here. Now we've got our objects and they're going to be named uh, appropriately cube and sphere. Um, but there's there's something else to know about an object and that's if you go into edit mode you can see the vertices and the lines and, and that's going to be unique to every object. So what you can do is you can get access to that data by going to this uh, icon here which is the the uh, edit data essentially uh, the internal data of that object so if I go here and I can see cube um, and let me rename this more appropriately uh, to say cube data and then on the sphere this is going to be sphere uh, data now what I can do is I've got my object here that's a cube and it uses cube data but it doesn't have to. Um, I can actually select from my list, I can say sphere data, and this cube is now using the data of the sphere, but this is still named cube. If I look here, uh, it's still named cube, but the internal information is coming from sphere. Now, if I were to go and edit sphere um, in some way, you can see that it's changing both of them. Uh, the the objects are actually linked here in terms of, of how that how that information is saved and that's what we're going to do when we want to change the shape um, for our cube uh, if I take this cube now and if I were to go into edit mode on it it would instantly pop us into our our uncut uh, pieces which is going to be a little difficult to work with and I I have to go to wireframe mode and then it, it we don't need to we don't need to worry about this so let me let me remove these objects and let's create some new objects for our for our cuts let's create a um, let's create a cylinder and I want to create a a uh, eight-sided one here we'll do a octagon and so let's create that let's create a uh, cylinder this one will do a uh, full round cylinder here and let's create a um, let's create another cube and I'll do some modification on that so now these are very small we want to get these to the right size so I'm just going to change my dimensions to um, I'll just make these 57s and I'm going to move these out of the way now I can see that my my center point on these is all in the center of the geometry and that's exactly what I want uh, at any time if I hit alt G it will move them to the correct position uh, but I don't need to do that right now and let's make this one 57 and then for this one uh, instead of the cube I'm just going to go into edit mode really quickly and I'm just going to select uh, a couple things here um, and I'll just make a, a different shape out of that um, I'm just going to really quickly just collapse those faces and, and weld the points there. Um, so now let's give these some names. Now this is cube, this is cylinder, this is cylinder 01. Well, let's give them more appropriate names. So on this one, uh, we'll call this uh, octahedron. And notice I'm not changing the name, uh, the the um, uh, name of the object. Uh, the name of the object is still cube here uh, I'm changing the data name so this one I'm going to do octagon barrel and uh, this one I'll just uh, leave uh, cylinder let's just change this to uh, cut uh, I'll name all these cut so that they're easier to find in the list And then this is a um, 
a new concept to tell you about in Blender. When I have an object that's being used in Blender, um, you'll generally have a number. Uh, uh, if I make an instance of this, this is a little different than a copy, but I've got two of these now, and I can see that two of these are being used. Uh, this data is being used twice. And if I were to delete this, it would be used zero times, and it would be erased from my scene. Uh, if I want to maintain that it always is in the scene and doesn't get deleted uh, when memory is cleared out, uh, what I can do on these is I can select them and hit the F. And the F, notice it now says 3. The F stands for fake user, and so it just creates an extra user of that data. Now that I've done that, um, I, don't, I don't need to do this, but uh, since they now have a fake user, I could actually go ahead and delete these from my scene, but the data would stay in the scene. That was that's because the the fake user would still have a, a hold of them basically. But uh, for now, I think we'll just leave this. What I want to do is I want to take all my scales here, and I'm going to apply my scales. Uh, so now all those are going to be at at one for scale also. And finally, what we can do now is with these pieces. Uh, we can just select our cube, and remember we're not in object mode, we're in this edit mode here. And our cutting cube right now is, is this. Let's change that to cut uh, cube so we can get back to that. And let's give that a, a fake user just so we know it won't get deleted. Uh, and I'm going to go to my drop down list and I'm going to say cylinder. And I'm getting a failure because... Um, what did it do here? This will happen occasionally with your with your boolean if something goes haywire. Um, let me see here. Oh, there it was just very large. Oh, because I had a scale on that object already and it was not zeroed. So if I just um, Alt S, uh, that just shows the importance of zeroing your your scales uh, or applying your scales. So now I have a cylinder. Uh, that I can cut this with and this will work just like the just like the cube uh, you can go ahead and pick different angles experiment with your your shape here uh, I'll go ahead and say uh, instead of cylinder let's look at the octagon barrel and uh, I can see what that looks like what if uh, maybe that rotates uh, to align uh, a little better with the uh, with the pieces and uh, finally I'm going to go to the octahedron. Now, I can see in this case this one's not working very good because my my core is exposed. So on this one, I'm going to need to actually just enlarge uh, those pieces until I get to a point where where that works. Uh, I'm going to hit my rotation, rotate Z, 45, <coughs> and. Finally, um, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you've gotten this far, congratulations. Um, I hope you're able to start making your own puzzles soon. Uh, this particular cube is my next puzzle that I'm making. Uh, I've already actually printed this out, and I've been able to, to start playing with it, and it's, uh, it's going to be a fun puzzle. Uh, my next video series will be actually uh, continuing after this uh, with this puzzle now in the real world. So uh, I will start with uh, showing some, some pictures of this as it came off the printer, uh, some early videos showing how it turns, and uh, walking through the stages of uh, sanding, filing, uh, and eventually putting stickers on it and having a completed puzzle. So uh, that ends this series. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody. And if, uh, if there's a topic you'd like to see more of, uh, please mention it in the comments, and I will do what I can. Thanks again.